So welcome back, guys and girls. We are into the final matchup of today, uh, into Group B. Obviously, we'll be finding out who will be joining Team Pyrogen, a really outstanding team who's kind of shocked a lot of people, beating against all authority earlier on and knocking down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I lost it today. I'm just gone. All right, Jason, you just host oh, the rest No, of the it's just because every time you look at me, I'm looking at the camera, I look at you, and then you look at the camera right away, and then I look at the camera, you look at me, it's just like, I can't meet you eye to eye. Well, let's look at the game, because I do let's believe do it is going live. We are going to be going straight into Zavot. It will be Exaquo up against ESC, the two teams who still can qualify for this. And we are seeing an immediate exchange going down on B, C going into the hands of ESC, A going into the hands of Exaquo, but B still up for grabs. Grabs indeed, and let's see. We're gonna have exactly on the uh, Russian side. We're gonna have ESC over on the US side, and you see them. They're getting the hold on to beat. They were, already get, were yeah, they were able to get the best get of ESC um, earlier on today. Obviously, uh, I think they actually did lose on this map though against them. Yes, they did, uh, unfortunately. But let's see if they can pull this one back. And they didn't look that strong earlier on when they were playing against Pyrogen in that last map on uh, Lankang Dam. But I wonder how much this could affect them as a team. I wonder if their morale is gonna be shot from that. Well, we'll find out. Nice little. Uh Damage control play coming in from Kazam there, making sure he was out of the way of C to allow the respawns to come in for Janssen, uh, Doobie, and Lags are there so they can pick up at least the A site for now. B still held at a 2 to 1, I believe. Um, but actually maintaining C, very surprising stuff. Being able to fend off the hordes and turn this round to a 2 to 1 hold, picking up the A C site and just winning against that mid exchange. We do see Probo going down as well. Lovely, lovely play coming out from the ESC side. Kazam doing real wonders there and just forcing back the opponent. We are seeing a big commitment from Exaquo though towards the A site. And Doobie, he's there waiting. I wonder if he's going to turn around and actually try to spot them out here. He's actually going to get in towards these windows that we saw. I believe it was, what, Winghaven used? Yes. And looks like he's actually going to take him before he can do that. So he's going to get dropped. That means exactly we're going to be able to get control of A here. going to be able to get control of B in the meantime. And Probo doing an interesting little bit of play, actually working around towards C here. It looks like he's trying to pick up a kill as he does get taken out instead. And I was actually wondering if they're going to go for a push on a C off that, but with him going down, it leaves Mimi all by himself at B, and this is most likely going to mean that ESC is going to take B back. Yeah, most certainly. So Lags are up on that side as well. Explode pushing out to try and find Blade, who's been causing some real damage around the back. He's going to lay down some fire, does not get the connection. He gets taken down from the rotating Explode there, who push around the side. It's a 2-1 to one in favor to ESC right now. They're going to try and hedge their bets by picking up A, because they feel they're going to lose C. Right thoughts to have in mind, but they need to lock some of these sites down because it's still very close. Uh, 121 tickets to 129. It's a 2-1 to one still in favor of the US side of ESC. So they're looking good. They're going to maintain on A, and now they're looking to convert onto the C side as well. This is a big start from these guys. This could be a trip cap. I want you to see them go for this too because they were able to pull it off against Exactly earlier on in this uh, this map as well. And the thing was is that Exactly was a man, actually wasn't a man down at the time, but they still had it and they weren't really able to hold it for too long. But they're going to be able to lock it down for just a little bit, give them a little bit of a ticket lead here. And Kazan was trying to go in just to spot how many were at A. He does get taken down before that can happen. And now Jensen going around the backside gets taken down. Damn it, guys, stop diving before I can get to you on the camera. As we see Doobie going to be sitting right by these tanks here. You're going to watch the flank on that side and just going to force. You see to make a move somewhere else, or sorry, exactly to make a move somewhere else. Interesting respawn choice as well. Explo actually spawned back in on the B site as well to support Kazam, but actually C is going to be the contested one. But the two players who are actually still present are doing the job lag, so they're spotting out Zordon and Janssen keeping eyes across through that lower tunnel. But no one was present in mid until Kazam started to make the push through. He's going to find one, allow the respawn for Doobie, and this 2 to 1 hold is going to start really starting to hurt the opponents of Exactly. They're down to 90 tickets already. And at least they're doing a lot better than they did in the map prior on Land King Dam uh, against Pyrogen here. And now we're seeing Doobie work down towards middle, actually go under or into the underpass here. He gets a nice double piece right there. A nice two piece, I guess is the right phrase. Um, but he gets a nice kill coming in from the backside. And that does lock down, I believe, C for themselves as he's already there. But exactly. I don't know what that extra sound was. I think that's the in-game sound. I've never heard that sound in my life. No, me neither. Was it like a no? Yeah. Yeah, that was a little bit that interesting. That was amazing. <laughs> exactly. Able to get two cap back, though, <laughs> in the hands of B and C. And ESC struggling to get anything back here. They're getting forced on the respawns over and over. And they haven't started group up yet, which is something that we saw ESC do earlier on today that they really didn't thrive with. They just couldn't really group up, and they couldn't really make the pushes when they needed to get, make them count. Yeah, this time, though, they're reading the gameplay well. They've you know held on to the A site for now, at least. They've still got a couple of players, but maybe a bit of an overcommitment from exactly We're seeing Blade sprinting his legs off to get back to support C, because Miziek is the only player standing on this one. Jansen going straight out for the challenge in mid, spotting down, I believe that was Probo. So he's been eliminated. We are seeing that C site up for grabs here. And I'm curious to see what ESC are going for. Actually, Jansen going straight out towards B, leaving the respawns for Explo and Kazam. But Kazam now the only man standing on that C site. But this could be a nice little convert here, but they're not going to pick up C. They're going to get B, but they might lose out on A. 
I'd be. I mean, it's really interesting to see that it's just kind of everyone struggle and spam flag caps as much as possible. There doesn't seem to be much strategy behind it right now, as you see. You know, fights breaking out everywhere across the map. I'm not really sure what's going on. It seems really familiar to what we saw in the the first time these two teams met as the starting of the game or start of the day um, for these games. And right now, at least two kills coming for XPLO on to be here. I might have actually locked it down from and secured it a little bit further on. And we see the respawns coming in, but exactly, they just keep dying one by one, and they're just not grouping up. It's I don't know. I don't really agree with that playstyle right now. No, and it's costing the C site, which is the ideal site to hold. We need some more respawns, ideally coming in for ESC towards C, so they can actually hold this one down. Because Probo and Blade, both eyeing it up. And there we go. We do have the three men now present on that B site. They know that uh, on the C site, excuse me, and they know that's exactly what they're hitting. Kazam finding two on the cross. Blade and Probo going down. And now four players on C. We are just seeing Explo watching the cross towards that B site. Good play from him. Doesn't need to commit overly towards it. Just needs to play this position correctly. They're losing our numbers on C, however. There's only lags are now standing. They're going to need to weigh on these respawns because they're getting aggressive towards A, and I don't know why they're doing it. They don't need to overextend. They've lost lags are now on C, and that could cost them the site here. And you can't afford to let those go right now. I mean, it's 92 to 48 tickets in favor of ESC currently, and they were able to win this map earlier on today as well against them. And exactly, they need to go into this this map, I mean, with a fresh new mindset. If you look at it, both teams came into this, you know, this final set of games today, it was ESC beating against Authority. It was exactly falling to Pyrogen. I mean, if you think about the morale of the team, ESC gotta be, have to be really hyped up right now, and they have a nice 40 ticket lead into this map uh, as well. And it's the exact same three maps they played on earlier on today. And, Right now we're seeing Doobie get a nice little bit of a hold right there, but he does eventually get taken down, and that should mean that eight will go over to Exaquo. And where are EC gonna attack to stop that? Well, we saw Seo actually playing a little bit of a waiting game with these guys, slowing them down the rotate towards C. But it seems that, you know, Exaquo haven't been able to really utilize that, but they have won the one-on-one -on -one battles with Lagter and Jansen opening up the B site, immediately getting Doobie and Kazam joined by Jansen back to defend, which leaves C light on players once again. So Explo could be in trouble here. He's going to be taking down Seo, but still a little bit of a sloppy push, but they managed to contain the threat in the end, leaving pretty much just Blade standing with Zordon and Mizak to kind of pick up the pretty much the remains. And right now you can see on the screen, I mean, you can just see from the colors, you see how ESC is kind of set up in this kind of slight curve coming from C to B, trying to close them in, trying to force them to come in from certain areas. And ESC, they're just rushing in the underpass. They're not even going around the backside of C. They're just going to get straight in there. They're going to be able to cap over C here in just a second. And ESC kind of almost got wiped off of that too, but they do still have a huge lead right now. And if they can close this one out with this nice 70 ticket lead, this will be a huge advantage coming into the second map, or at least the second half. Yeah, and Blade and Miziak looking for an interesting path through, actually taking the lower tunnels. Blade's been found, but Miziak does manage to make his way all the way around the back of A, probably going to wait for some respawns to come in so they can actually hit this A site because they could lose out on C here and they could get trip capped if they're not careful. They're almost overextending at a, such a critical time with 14 tickets remaining. They need to make sure they're locking down the sites they have and then maybe pushing oh, you know, no. a very specific force. And now they're being trip capped because they overextended. Just Blade standing, he's going to have to wait on some respawns. He goes down anyway. And nine tickets means pretty much your respawns are going to cost you any sort of lead you might be able to chip away at. I mean, they have four tickets left to work with if they all spawn at the same time. And there it goes. I mean, it's just going to be a 75 ticket lead for ESC coming into the second half. Not a bad half for them. That was no, very well played. Brilliant. I mean, it was a little bit sketchy at some times. There's a man humping the thing right there. I don't know why he's doing that. That's a little bit interesting, but it's definitely a strong start. Yeah, brilliant start. Um, initially, I feel as though they're a little bit shaky. Um, they didn't get the ideal setup, you know what I mean? They didn't have the kind of um, flat-out control, but once they settled in, once they got a little bit more calm, they got locked down in the sites they liked, ESC started to stretch their legs. They held you know, a trip cap, you know, and they held that two to one. The likes of, you know, Lags are playing well, Kazam doing beautifully in mid. Even the lowest, uh, well, second lowest killer here. But as you know, kills don't necessarily win you games. It certainly helps for specific players in specific places. But, you know, Miziek, 14 to 8. You know, he did certainly very well himself. But Blade, a key player from the last couple of maps, down on 4 to 16. So not quite, you know, finding that performance, maybe letting that last, you know, loss, the killing blow, really cause them that, you know, big momentum that they had before. I mean, this is kind of similar to what happened. Um, for exactly when they played in this best of three earlier on. I mean, they would lose every single half, or in the first half, but would come back, would figure out the, the strategy and be able to win the, uh, win the map in general. But right now, I don't know what they can really do. That's a lot of points or a lot of tickets to be behind in this first uh, set of games. And I really wonder if they do lose this first map, are they going to have any motivation <laughs> left into the second one? Because that would be on Dawnbreaker. And 
obviously they lost to Pyrogen on that map earlier on. Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, Zavod is a strong map for ESC. If you look through their pre previous results, they've always been quite strong in it. Yeah. Um, certainly proving that they are able to compete. The maps they've lost out on have been generally to very strong teams if they have lost this, you know, like to the likes of MYM and people who you generally put above them in the rankings, essentially. But, you know, rankings seem to mean absolutely nothing these days because, you know, the sixth place team to just qualify into this section, into the groups, has secured the first spot in Group B. Joining now Dingtas and Fnatic, but now we need to find out who will be joining them. If, you know, uh, ESC can pick up the first map in such a dominating fashion, it's going to be hard work for the opponents of Exacro to kind of just boost themselves back into this. They will be starting on the US side, so they will be given C to start with, and B certainly an easy possibility. But I, it all comes down to the start for me. If they get down to a really bad loss to start with, I'm not sure they can bring themselves back into this. Well, it looks like we're going to see an early two cap come out of ESC as well, committing three towards this B site right now. And it, this is the strong start that we were expecting out of ESC. And if they pull it off, we're not sure if exactly can really come back from this. But it's, it's not over just yet. Obviously, a little bit of an engage in the beginning. You're going to see the two cap go over to one team sooner or less, or sooner or later. But we're going to see them actually push up here into B. We're going to have three men over on the side of uh, Exacro here. And it looks like they're going to win the duel overall here. There's a two on one, well, not three on one developing right there. They're going to oh. lock that one down eventually, but they're going to lose C for it. Yeah, Janssen's play then was absolutely pivotal. Kazam now joining him, obviously, on the respawn. <laughs> They're in the perfect place for one player to lock down A, um, just to leave that there. It's probably going to be explode, maybe joined by Doobie if needed. But they have C now, ESC, and they can work back to picking up B because they're in the ideal position to create that crossfire on the cross. Exacto are really pinned in here. They have no easy route to B without being spotted out. And Doobie, just like he called out, does get the respawn on the backside, going to be able to defend onto A here. They're actually looking for a tri cap right now. And if Vagster <laughs> can get this cap over, they might actually make it work. But there's a lot of men, three men, practically four committed from Exacto's side to really lock down B. And right now, it's just neutralized right now. It hasn't gone over to anyone's favor. And those 75 tickets, remember, Exacto drops below 75. That's yeah. it. They will have lost the first map and we'll be going to Dawnbreaker. Yeah, and this now exchange on the C site is huge. And that was won over by Jansen again, who's been doing real important work for the ESC side. Him winning that allows the respawns to come in to give them a chance to actually hold on to the C site, which is the easy kind of uh, setup here, the BC hold. But right now we are seeing finally the pushing coming out from Exacro using those lower tunnels. Actually interesting gun choices as well. Sayo, they're not running with the usual setup and it's worked out for them. They brute forced their way through that C site, but they've lost out on B. They weren't quick enough to convert A, and they're still going to be held to a two to one. And the thing is, it's just about exactly they're not winning the one on ones anymore. And because of that, they're saying they're overcommitting the amount of resources they need to push in and take a flag. And from that, you're able to back cap something against them and really just kind of force them to play against the ropes. And they don't really have a lot of tickets to play with. They're looking at about 40 tickets that they can really sit on right now. And yep. ESC are showing no signs of giving up. No, they're certainly not, but uh, exact, uh, Sayo is in a great position. He will be able to take that A-site over, get some revives in if necessary, or just the respawns. But they need to, you know, think about C. They need to hold on to C as well. Probo's gone down, and we're going to see a BC hold coming in quite strongly for ESC. But actually, beautiful breakout play on the outside. Zordon, Miek, uh, <laughs> Miziek, and Blade picking up that B-site has been absolutely game-changing for them, or life-saving, should I say. Because otherwise, they'll be locked down to the hole that really screwed them over in the first half here. And then winning this one over for now gives them a glimmer of hope. They may lose out on A, but they've got a solid chance of picking up that C-site if they win the one on one Oh, no, they don't, though. You can see all the death on the screen just across the board. Jansen, the last man standing. He's only against uh, Blade as last man as well. So Blade getting the respawns, but so Jansen's going to have them in just a second. All he needs to do is just hold on for a little bit longer. They do get that two-cap, and I'm assuming B will be kept in momentarily. But look at this respawn from ESC. They come in the side. They flank him out. They're going to get the control on a B, and we're going to see Exacto take C here, I would assume. Yeah, Zordon trying to hold on to B for his dear life, but Lags are still looking for this. Picks up his teammate as well. It's a two on one side. It's a 2v2 as well onto the world C. Exactly will maintain C, at least for now. A will not be in the hands, and B has been ripped away from them. ESC are in a good spot here. This is very close now to going to their favor. 75 tickets is the key number. If we see the US side drop below that, they're in trouble, and they are going for literally desperation plays. This many people just allotted towards that A pickup is huge because they've left C open for the taking, and ESC will know that. And there's three tickets remaining. If they die two more times or three more times, it's going to be over. They do get the two cap here, but at what cost? Because they have three men down that they can't really afford to bring back in. They can't afford to lose anyone else, and now they only have two alive. So we're gonna have to see people respawn in, but that means that we're gonna have to see Exacto take or hold control of B or uh, sorry CNA, which is so damn hard to do on this map because right now they are falling down one by one. 76 tickets now, three people or sorry two people dead, three alive. This is the this is the final stand. 
This is all they can do on this map. They have to try and put together pieces. It's a long road back. And as much as I'd love to see them do it, I think it's almost beyond them. They're trying to play defensive. They're trying to play smart. But we are seeing a fantastic spawn as well for ESD coming in to pick up the A site. And 76 tickets is not going to be enough to play with here. One ticket now remaining in the first map. ESC are on the verge of picking this up. And there's no respawns. There's no rotates. There's nothing left for the opponents. They have to put everything into this to try and do something. But it's That's too it. little too late the kill on a has been enough to be that damaging blow and hell they're gonna pick up c just to add insult to injury they know they can't afford the respawns and ESC stamping their authority on the very first map here after such a strong lead of 75 tickets on the first half there we have it ESC picking up the first map and now all we can hope is that exactquo can kind of pull themselves together for the second one on the way but dawnbreaker they're one for one on it right now today uh, they were able to beat uh, EC, obviously, on it. Yep. Um, and then they lost to Pirate on it. But in, in general, exactly. Well, they're four for <laughs> seven now yeah. on Dawnbreaker. Not yeah. the best record. No. But ESC is two for four. So, a little interesting. Obviously, the percentages are in Exacto's favor right there. But I don't know. I mean, after that, after two major round losses or map losses in a row, yep. you're kind of at that point where I pretty, I pretty much can guarantee exactly was on tilt. They are just mentally not in the right position. No, certainly not. They're going to be starting to doubt everything. You know, just you know, winning those one-on-ones that was pretty much their bread and butter not too long ago is now going to be one of the hardest tasks for them. They're not going to be winning those out. They're not going to be confident. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be challenging in the confident spots. They'll probably be playing a little bit more passively. You know, maybe they've got a great team leader who can kind of bring them back, but... It, it's not going to be easy now. And obviously, Dawnbreaker is all about you know, winning those one-on-ones if you go for the A split down the long road, obviously down on the east side. It's, it's not easy for these guys now, obviously. And the important thing is, if ESC do win this game, the two teams who came into this in the lowest seeding in Group B will be walking away with the secured spots. You know, exactly where we're in eighth. Uh, against all authority, we're in fourth. ESC 10th and Pyrogen 16th. So what a turn up to the books if ESC can do it. Obviously, they're not quite there yet. We're still waiting to find out if they can convert Dawnbreaker into their favor now i can only hope they can you know because i like seeing you know a bit of an underdog story and seeing how these guys do on this one i think they are just getting themselves ready they're not quite live just yet but they are just warming up to the server probably just talking through the last kind of uh trying to get them mentally prepared for this we can drop in game now we can hopefully take you through just you know what you might be seeing and you know last time we saw um exactly do really well here it was because doobie pretty much played a perfect game so picked up the role as well in game sounds confuse me it's going to scare I, me a little bit. Yeah, I the yell earlier that. Than was that. awesome. I want to hear that back. It was just like some really random yell. To be fair, there are some really um, rare sound files mm -hmm. in Battlefield. So I'll be kind of curious if it's something like that. There was always like, I think it was Battlefield 3 had this really rare trigger um, that triggered like a, a sound pack. I've, I've never heard it before. Maybe I've just you know, missed out on it the whole time. But I never heard that in the entire time I've been playing. So I'm kind of interested to see if you guys at home did hear that as well. And we aren't just going completely mental. We may be. We may be. I'm not sure. I kind of hope we're not going to It is, to it is pretty late already now. Yeah, it is. And we've had it a is. lot of best of threes yeah. happen today, so <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we're going a little bit crazy. Yeah, it happens. It really does happen to us. But I do believe we are almost ready to go live. And we do see the boost coming out as well for uh, Exactquo. So looking to challenge straight up on that B side. So that's going to be a big point of contest. It's pretty much become standard to see this boost come in as well with those respawns on top of it. I wonder if they're going to go for that hit onto uh, B yet again here as he does get the boost up. Let's go ahead and switch right over to B and see what's going to happen here. See how many people actually split off. We see three men from uh, ESC going to be over on the US side pushing towards it. Exactquo going to be sending four there. And this could be very dangerous. Exactly got completely taken advantage of last time uh, in this spot when they were going up against Pyrogen. And right now, it looks like they're not going to let that happen this time. But the nades, they take back down the back man here. As you have a flank coming in from the backside as well on them. And right now, B is going to be capped over, but they haven't even taken A just yet. No, just about fell into their hands now. They will probably get a two to one here. Uh, Lagson needs to come back and play a bit more passive. He knows the exchange, as you saw at the start from that flank, it did not go well. So he was expecting maybe someone to try and push C. But right now, you know, the confidence is not with the exact squad. They want to, you know, pick up that two to one hold and just lock this down. But we know that ESC can play from the baselines here. They'll send up Janssen, they'll send up Doobie, and they can do real damage. But this time they're coming up against Blade, who is set up in the position he's so good at. He's going to be just working down the flank. He knows that the player on Cow has been taken down. He's going to go around the back of Doobie, probably get the kill here. But there is, you know, a good couple of players trying to find that pinchering move. But this is very much up in there. B is not a secured site in either team's hands right now. Well, with that double kill coming in for him, I think they're 
actually going to lock that one down there. Are going to be able to pick it up here, but what's going to happen with the rest of SC? We do have XPLO going for the flank here. No one's at A right now, so they're going to get a free cap onto that. But as you see, Probo, he's already in the back of C. He's going to get the cap back onto that as well. So we're just going to have a quick little trade here of A and C. And right now, there's no one in this balcony side, and Blady's pushing straight up here, going for maybe a little bit of a contest onto A right now, but he's actually going to get shot down by Kazam right there. And that does open up a potential B here, uh, at least a B take out of ESC. Yeah, interesting choice uh, to send Lagzer and Doobie down towards C straight away. Maybe trying to draw the attention away from B, because we do see Janssen get himself straight in towards the side. He needs to be careful. Players are making themselves known on that catwalk section. We do have bl uh, uh, Blade there and Seo, and he'll be just taken out straight up. But quickly, we've seen that Seaside being the most important thing here, because Doobie's won that one-on-one -on -one out. We've seen Kazam holding back the players. He picks up the kill, not the exchange. That is vital, allowing the respawns. They go for an AC hold. Very unique, very different. But at the moment, it's working if they can stop those oh, players coming back. Oh, He's behind two of them on this balcony. He's going to completely open this up. Zorna doesn't know where he is. He gets the kill until... I heard a sniper rifle go off. And they're going to get the control of Balcony. They're going to get the AC hold. Uh, they're going to lose A here wow. momentarily, but they're going to get control of B. And I believe that was Laxer. Yeah, running with a Scout Elite. Weird choice, but he's going to try and make it work there. He's not getting the tags down that he needs. Uh, but if he does, oh, he, got got, he did get the tag then. Actually, he needs to go for the follow-up with the pistol. Takes down Zordon. But I, I'm not sure if I agree with the choice, but hell, if they can make oh. it stick, fair play to them. If they can convert this B-site and now hold on to it because of his play, That'd be pretty interesting to I'm watch. I'm going to stick with that man until he dies and doesn't have that sniper rifle anymore. I'm going to see how many kills he can pick up. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see how many kills he can pick up, but he gets taken down eventually. And that will be A and B taken back for Exacto here. And ESC, they seem to be out of responses. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So, yes. two to one hold right now. It is in favor to the team who are down a map, so good start to get it into a third. But right now, ESC are in the position to take that B-site into the hands. Lags are just getting set up here, pushing up the street, leaving the cap in the hands of Janssen. We see one defensive fallback coming in the form of Doobie and Kazam, trying to make sure they don't lose out on that C-site. Janssen doing a big play there, splitting right down through the middle, picking up Probo, but the kills are not going their way down by C. Misek and Seo picking these ones up is now huge. They could pick up that C-site. They're already looking like they want to pick up B. This could be a trip cap if one of the players found Janssen on that a side. This is very dangerous right now. They do actually, we're going to see exactly what take control of C, so they're going to maintain that one, but they're actually going to get, uh, get control of B in the meantime. On top of that, and Blade, it's been that single one man army uh, throughout the last time these two teams met on this map earlier on today, but right now, not doing as well, I guess, as he would, as he would really like to, as he's currently sitting on 10 and 6. He hasn't really been able to. I don't know, but it caused as much of a nuisance as he was, you know, prior on with that area that we were talking about. Because yeah. he, he pretty much shut that down. He pretty much claimed this entire street by himself with the help of these planters. Ooh, and Zordon was in a great spot there to really cause trouble, but the split coming from Janssen and Doobie really shut it down. But I don't think he's been able to get there just yet. He's always been shut down before he could get set up enough. Mm. Because even though it feels like, you know, um, Exacto had maybe the strongest start, you know, the, the points are still really close. The tickets are unbearably close, 92 to 100. We're going to see who may get that final stretch and get this locked down, finally work out the spawns and kind of find their comfort zone. At the moment, it's looking like ESC could be doing that. Kazam needs to come pretty big right now because, you know, he's, he's pretty much holding that mid-cross. He's going to get the tag, not the frag. He does get taken down eventually. And slowly but surely, Exacto are breaking through that inside push towards A. And Seo in a brilliant spot to wave some respawns to now challenge that A site. Laxer gets even the revive on that corridor. And you were talking about how you know crucial is to be able to hold on to it. They're able to lock that one down. And we control B. We see over towards A though. Jansen, he's in a one on two situation, even one on three now. He does get eventually get taken down. But it does spot those three men there. And that immediately kicks in the rest of ESC to start pushing towards C. They're going to go for the cap here on to C eventually. But Mimi's there. And right now he's been playing very passive. He's playing this safety role. As soon as that Seaside gets capped over, he'll probably start playing a little bit more safe or push up and then wait on the respawns onto him if any other teammates die. But actually, they're negating. They're ignoring that completely. They feel confident enough to take B away here. And ESC is still holding the 2-1, to one, and they've got solid set up here for that B hold. And they're winning the one-on-ones. They should be able to take Mesiac down, and that could be in a really missed bit of judgment there coming out from these guys, as ESC will be able to stretch their legs, stretch that lead, and get that ticket bleed working against the opponent, who now have only two plays, but they do get the random spawn, but straight away, Janssen back up towards that A side. He's just, he's been so annoying. He's been like the Del Arco, you know, from UMAV, uh, currently for ESC, just constantly getting into that A side over and over and over again. And they're going to trade C for it, but they're maintaining that two flag hold, and they've been able to finally build up a little bit of a lead here in this first half. 84 to 69 now. 
And Doobie still maintaining control of this balcony. He's going to catch Mimi yet again here. I wonder if he's going to pick up the kill, though, because there's three men up there. And that's a lot of resources. This was talking about from Exacto. They, they spawn in three people up here to take it back. <laughs> but when that happens, they lose out somewhere else. And I, I say that right now, but the rest of the team is just pretty much locking down B here. Yeah, being Jansen. That you said, back. right? They overcommitted a little bit much there, so Jansen now has been allowed to... He's pretty much roaming in between A and C. Whenever they lose one, he goes to the other straight up. And when he saw, okay, there's four players now trying to hit that B site for the opponents, I'll just get C, and then we can work back on B because I know we'll win the exchanges, and that's exactly what's just happened. B will go back over to ESC, and once again, exactly what we just left with C in their hands. They've got a good setup to challenge the B site, but they still got a lot of time to wait till they can really do it because Zordon and Mizik are the only two who really can, but Exploit getting right in their faces, just making it hard work here, not making an easy cross shot. And that's exactly what they need. 79 tickets to 49. The lead starting to trickle truly and utterly out of the hands of uh, Exaqua. And you still see XPL, as you pointed out. Well, now, he's, now he's not there anymore. He's dead. <laughs> but he was being there for quite a while trying to get yep. uh, the shots down, but they do. Unfortunately, they lose control of B here, and they do only have three men up as they need to get those respawns in. You see exactly they have every every single person alive here. They get a nice crossfire from the uh, from that catwalk area, I'm going to call it. And right now, we're actually having a two-man push out of ESC on a B here. Looks like oh, they should be able to lock it down cap. here. This could be and a Jan trip cap. Oh, I thought that was Jansen. I was just assuming it was Jansen <laughs> coming around to see. Yeah, because I'm getting over towards C himself there because I believe Jansen may have been down or in a better position. He's actually held up within that BC's hold, but it, it has forced... The spawn from Exacto to B by A. They've lost down the one on one. Doobie's not be there. And maybe they've overextended it. They could lose out on a good couple of these uh, sites that have been holding down. Maybe getting a little bit too confident. Two sites now up for grabs. C does seem to be going to Exacto's favor for now, unless Kazam can finally get that show off onto Blade. Respawn's coming through. But B is going to Exacto's way. This is dangerous now. Yeah, this is getting very dangerous. And oh, Exacto wow. just completely stomping over them at C. They're going to get a try cap for themselves here. But XPL, pretty much desperation move onto A. Going to be able to cap that one back for himself. But right now, yeah. they need to be able to get another flag back if they want to have a nice little big uh nice big lead going into this second half and right now i mean if you look at kills across the board you have 19 and 13 blade has really turned it on here in this in this half and we look over at you know the rest or the other side because they have 17 and 12 so two real stand-up players for both teams and b is going to be contested over and they don't really care the thing is we're seeing Issy coming from this back side here, from Catwalk side, and going straight in behind those boxes oh. so they don't have to worry about anyone on this balcony side. And that means Exactly has to push out straight from that and get over towards B right away unless they have a man at Catwalk to nade them down, which we just saw happen. Yeah, and look at Lags' positioning as well. He's right round the back there. He's going to be picking up C when they need it. If they don't win it on that B site, he'll just go straight up there, wait for those respawns, push in and grab it. Because it looks like they won't win the B kind of exchange here because there's so many players present from Exacto. Here he comes, straight on C. Going to cap that one through, at least maintain a 2-1 to -one for now. But ESC need to make sure they don't lose out on A. Even if they lose C, uh, B, they need to maintain at least a 2-1 to one to keep a solid lead here. And B might just swing in their favor as well. Picking up a good set of kills. Uh, Doobie doing real work. You can see the bodies just strewn across, across the floor of Exacto. And there's the trip cap coming in right at the end. Ten tickets now remaining for the opponents. Respawns become the biggest threat. They can do nothing here but try and minimize the damage. Yeah, and it's, I mean, they're trying to go for an A cap and a C cap at the same time. It's going to work out for them, but they can't really afford to respawn in after uh, a couple more deaths here. And we're seeing Jensen working up this balcony side. Get the kill on his Arden right there, so that does open up a potential push on a C if they want to make happen, as Laxer is going to be pushing in for that one. But we have Doobie and XPLO pushing towards A. They're going to get it. Five tickets remain now. And this should pretty much be the last straw breaking the camel's back. Yeah, it certainly will be. And it's all about can they turn it around in the second half? They had moments of brilliance. But overall, ESC was just a tiny bit stronger. And to be fair, 45 tickets, not a huge lead, but certainly going to be weighing heavy in their minds now that they've been down, you know, pretty much every single game off the back of this one. 75 in the first map, now 45 in the second. Worrying times for these guys. And ESC, you know, so I, I do want to point out, actually, as you mentioned, a good couple of the players there really going for it. Blade, 22 to 17. Just trying what he can. He's clearly fighting for everything because obviously there's still a spot up for grabs. This isn't just for, you know, the third place kind of, you know, bridesmaid gift at the end of it all. It's it's still all to be played for. And ESC just looked that little bit hungrier for it. I will say this as well for uh, Exacto. Against ESC in their best of three earlier on, biggest differential they had going into the second half was 30. And that's not a really good sign. I mean, they, they basically just lost about, what was it, like six halves in a row? Right now? Yeah. Actually, no, more than that. Uh, f two, four, six, seven halves in a row. Yeah. That's got to weigh on you and your morale as a team. And I really kind of hope that they can snap back into this one because just, you don't want to go out 2-0 after, you know, taking two, three maps uh, against SC early on and coming out the victor.
Yeah, exactly. That's that's a terrifying part. And, and congratulations, even to get to this point for ESC, to fight your way through the lowers here, you know, to beat yeah. out teams like you know, against all authority is just as impressive as Pyrogen yeah. doing it. And even a more important you know, point, you know, okay, you lose the first upper game. All right, we can work through the lowers. Against all authority, didn't expect ESC to come out fighting, but these guys are certainly hungry. And we might just be seeing the two lower teams coming to you know, the B group picking this up. I, I still can't believe it. It's unbelievable. I mean, when we think about the groups we have coming up the rest of the week. You know, we obviously are going to be doing Group C tomorrow and Group D the day after. There's obviously one clear-cut winner that I think we both agree on within both those groups. You know, we have UMAV. MYM, yeah. Epsilon. Epsilon, there we go. UMAV and, and Epsilon. UMAV in Group C, Epsilon in Group uh, D. But the other teams, I mean, <laughs> it's still, I mean, it's not clear-cut completely, but it's... We, we have our favorites to win those ones, and this is the real group that was just pretty much up in the air. And Oh, wow. I wonder if this is live. Yes, he are not going for the boost. I don't actually. think this is live. This is not live. Definitely not live. <laughs> not live. Don't know why, because both teams are panic. in. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Don't panic, Pansy. I always have a mild panic when things I'm just like, oh, I'm not sure if live or <laughs> This not. is not working like it's supposed to. <laughs> it, it, it confuses me. But guys, let me know your predictions. If you are just tuning in now, if you've been sat here watching the whole time, thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for waiting out these very, very long games. Um, make sure you tweet at myself, at they call me Pansy, at my incredible co-caster, at <laughs> Jay Kaplan. Incredible. Why are you Where'd surprised when I'm nice to you? Because you're never nice to me. I called dog, but... Beautiful and majestic. It doesn't mean I'm Call being me honest. beautiful and majestic, but mean it. Be beautiful and majestic, and I might consider it. I had a majestic haircut originally. Oh, God. I thought you meant now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Jason. Woof. Back to the topic. Guys at home, tweet through to us at Twitter and give us your feedback as well, and give me your predictions to who's going to win this one, because this could be all over in the next couple of minutes. Can ESC convert the lead they currently have of just you know 45 points above where they're at, basically, in tickets? Or you can look at it as a deficit for an exact quote. It's up to you. Can they do this and really secure themselves into the offline finals? A team who you know, qualified 10th, not having the best of runs, never finishing first, but now certainly turning up. So, nine seconds left. Where's your money here? I want to say ESC. I, yeah. I really do, because just the, just the the seven losses, seven half losses in a row, it has to be so devastating. We are going to see ESC go for that boost spot, just like we saw uh, Exacto do earlier on. Let's go ahead and take a look straight at B, because that's where the big action is going to go down here. And you're seeing Exacto send two men there. Only two to defend against this, against the four-man squad of ESC. And this is, well, they're landing the nades where they need to, and they're picking up the kills, so that actually is a good start for them. Yeah, great need work coming in there, just spamming it out. You know, Zam's still fairly aggressive. He can do some real damage there, but not getting the connection he needs. And pretty much, Exacuo are negating the positions that could have caused him trouble. This time, the respawns, however, coming in, have allowed the likes of Janssen to take down the player on the cow wall, which was Provost, and now they can start their push towards that B side to go for the kind of conversion they need. Lovely play from Janssen there. Really open this one up. B should be swinging over. Even aggressive play from Lagza there, picking up the kills within that C house, pretty much, just dragging the attention away. And ESC, brilliant stuff to start with. And remember, 45 is that magic number. I mean, obviously, it's quite a few tickets to go for now, but if they can keep this up, if they can keep this this pressure they've been able to apply right now, then, I mean, you can see this line that's built up. It is just ridiculous. And to see Exacto pull through this is going to be very difficult. They need to be able to win these duels, these one-on-ones. They need to do them in the hard places when the other team's already set up. And right now, I'm not sure if they can really pull it off because it's going to be very difficult. You're seeing Doobie, you know, he's holding down this corridor very well, this catwalk. Just they said that gets Nate in the face and dies, obviously. That always is going to happen. But they are just keeping them pressured. But we do finally see a breaking point. Exacto does get the control of Balcony. They do get control of B here. And ESC are just immediately responding by taking C. Yeah, but they don't have any players left by A. That's the big difference here. They're kind of going all in. We're seeing the likes of Explo and uh, Janssen quickly going, oh, God, have we just left that completely open? Yes, we have. Blade now on the prowl, looking around for the kill. Doesn't manage to get it in between that corridor on the top, and we should be seeing C actually going over towards ESC. If Lagza can stay alive long enough with Probus on that catwalk, he's going to convert it. It's a two-to-one hold, and already the tickets are looking a little bit dangerous here. You know, I, I've got to say, early on, you know, Exacto need to be getting this really high up. And a and tri-cap. And the tri-cap is just going to add insult to injury. C now being the last bastion of hope for the Exacto side as they are now left with only that to their name. 
And 110 tickets currently right now. We're seeing Zordon especially through. got some good vision on top of C right now. He's actually going to spot for his team a little bit here. And Blade rushing straight in to be here, trying to cap this over. But he gets taken down immediately. We see a two-man squad of Seo and Probo working in towards this Catwalk Jansen. Let's see if he can hold on to this in this one-on-two. And I don't think, nope, he's not even going to be able to get a, a shot off right there. It does get taken down. But this doesn't matter because ESC still have control of B right now. They're still maintaining this, and you see Meme even try to work on this outside towards the southern road, and it's not really the best position to be in. No, certainly not, but it might give them a chance to work up towards that A site, uh, trying to hedge their bets a little bit here, and trying to you know, make sure that that can be locked down, because Doobie is just laying in wait and just chilling this one out pretty much, and ESC are just looking so dominant right now. They need to win this 2v3 situation. They're about to be put in on A, but still, they're in a great spot right here. The respawns will be coming in, so it's going to be a three on three, but a lovely double picked up there. Now, Explo is in trouble. He's now surrounded. He's not going to be able to pick this one up. And to be fair, you know, ESC, they're being taken down this time. They definitely are, and one thing you do have to worry about is that while those three died at A, you still have Jansen, you still have Kazam spawning at C, getting control of that one. Uh, Probo's still in the backside of the balcony trying to cause a nuisance, but they got the full respawn back there, and luckily for Exactly, they're able to get the cap off of B right on that, so they do get the two cap here with 86 tickets remaining. That's still very close to that magic number of 45, and they got to hold on to this. They cannot afford to let this slip once because if that happens, EAC is just going to strangle them. Yeah, look at Janssen and look at Lags are there. Down towards the south of the map, they're in a perfect spot to really make this start being painful. If they can split the attention of the opponents now towards, you know, a little bit of a split down to the bottom. We've got, you know, Kazam, Doobie and Co. now pushing in towards B. It's all dependent on this pickup. Lags or does take down Seo, so now that has opened up A. And to be fair, there's very low response. B is even being turned over right now. ESC are looking hungry here. They've split the attention. They've made, you know, Exactly, going drips and drabs and in these kind of minute setups with only one player there. AC hold coming out. Exactly, only have B for now as well with Doobie just laying down the fire constantly. This means real, real trouble now. And they're at 80 tickets. And it seems like we've seen more AC holds than we've seen AB or BC holds it's throughout so the entire. Strange. It is very weird, but it's kind of like the play style there where they just keep going around in circles. Like you said, Jansen's like his job to pretty much run from A to C over and over. And if, if one of those isn't capped, make sure to cap it and lock it down. And right now they're going for a hit on a B here where they do have pretty much Sayo outnumbered. Wow. They're going to lock that down. They're going to get a tri cap here for a little bit. And let's take a look at Laxer. He gets a control of A. Can he stay alive? No, he gets taken down. And from that, that should mean they're going to lose control of A, but they should. Well, they should have been able to take control of B, but they actually haven't sent anyone there. And because of that, we're seeing the respawns coming from exactly on to C. They're going to cap that one back for themselves, and they're going to get control of B. They're going to turn this into a three cap for themselves. Yeah, but to be fair, Explo stands in their way with Janssen now in the middle. They're going to just about manage to keep their hands on B with some nice respawns going through. And Kazam going for the flat out challenge towards that C site. But let's bear in mind, 45 tickets are not far away. That US side now needs to start worrying. You know, obviously, Exaquo are not far from that marker right now. And Kazam is doing the damage, picking up a good kill to start with. Now, Probo stands in his way. This has gone ESC's you know, favor. This is a two to one hold. They can just let this one trickle down. And look at that Janssen in on A. This is going to be a possible trip cap coming in. ESC are literally on point right now. They are in 56 seconds. Se seconds. Tickets remaining. They can smell the victory right now. They can smell the offline finals and the cheeseburgers and the, the drinks that it's there to offer. And right now, I mean, they are getting to the point where it's going to be very difficult that, to to lose. I mean, you have 10 tickets left to really worry about. And exactly, they're trying to fight with everything they possibly can to make this happen. They're trying to push into every fight they possibly can. They have to win these duels. Doobie, he's looking to just survive here. He does actually get the trade right there, picking up one. And that's that's pretty much it. I mean, you have five tickets remaining, but you don't have any caps currently. And they've been trying so hard. Music is on 14 to 6. He's been trying to win these out, but 48 tickets is not enough. They need to be staying above 45. And they've got a 2 to 1 hold, but it's too little too late. Any kill, any respawn, any mistake will now deny them access to the finals and ESC are on the verge of securing their position in the offline finals with Fnatic, with Dignitas, with the ever incredible Pyrogen and this has been a day of complete upsets. The underdogs have truly had their day today. Exactly are trying to do a damage control effect here but 45 tickets. We are one ticket away from the two teams who had the lowest position within this group to secure themselves in the offline finals and they've done it. This is a beautiful sight coming through here guys. I, I can't believe this has actually been the result of today's games. Wow. Called it. When? <laughs> when did you call that Internally, one? before the day started. Just, oh, okay. I, I didn't want to you know, leave you hanging out against Authority. But yeah, I mean, nice. ESC, overcoming against Authority, overcoming Exactly after losing to them for the first time, and guaranteeing them a spot into the off on finals. Fantastic job by them. Hope yes. they can bring that energy and that practice they've been putting in into that uh, event as well. <sighs> This has been a fantastic day. So congratulations once again to obviously Pyrogen for not only overcoming against all authority, 
but proving they certainly deserve their spot. They're you know, qualifying through the upper bracket route, which is not the easiest way to do it. Um, <clears throat> and ESC as well. First game they pretty much had to face off against not too you know, long ago, once they got really pushed to it, was against Against All Authority. Once they dropped down to the lowest after a pretty much a crushing defeat against Exaquo, they fought back and they fought back hard. So as you can see the bracket on your screen, there are your two teams who have qualified through. It's Team Pyrogen and ESC. Pyrogen only getting through in 16th position, ESC in 10th. Absolutely incredible stuff today. And let's bear in mind, tomorrow we've got UMAV, we've got MYM, we've got M Faculty and C Play. I, <laughs> I dare even make a prediction to it. You know, maybe UMAV are safe, but then again, I just said against all authority was safe. Commentator's curse. Now UMAV is going to lose. <laughs> Congratulations, fancy. I hope you're happy yourself. But yeah, I think <clears> we both agree. UMAV definitely going to be the ones to yeah. uh, pretty much top the, uh, the team or the top of the group. Meet your makers, though. They haven't been looking that strong lately. And Ups faculty. And downs. Generally new team and C play. I mean, I really don't know which team will come in second, but I feel like it's pretty much up to either of those teams currently. I do not know what to expect of the next couple of games. Well, that, I mean, that group <laughs> I will really be coming up tomorrow at the same time, 1900 CET. And then as well as on Thursday, same time uh, with Group D with Epsilon, GC, our yep. Gamers Connection, Planet Key Dynamics, and Eyeballers. And Eyeballers with Kawa on the team, who is recently on Yoki. I want to see if they've gotten better because they did not look... I mean, they didn't, they didn't look good at all. They looked terrible no. throughout all four <laughs> cups. But with Kawa on the yep. team now, with a little bit of a different roster, I wonder if they can bring it back. Because second place, I mean, I, we're, we're, we can agree that Epsilon probably the team that's going to come through on that one in first place. But second place is still open. And that's what's so great about, I want to say, with group B, C, and D, you can't really guess yeah. that second team. No, no, certainly not. It's at least all for B, about you can't guess up. the first. <laughs> Indeed, it's been a crazy day. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I know I've had a great time. I think you've been almost cheerful throughout all of this, right? You've had a good time? Yeah. 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 Well, I learned majestic. a lot about you. I learned a lot about you. Yeah, the red sauce thing is just still I mean, that's a difference we can't really get over between us. No, it's it's too much. Too much. But anyway, guys, <laughs> if you have enjoyed today, make sure you follow us on Twitter, at They Call Me Pansy for myself, and at Jay Kaplan for the ever majestic co-caster who's had the delight of sitting next to me all day now. Uh, you can see it below us, just in case you need you know, spelling help there on my pronunciation. But if you do want to head over and check out all the details about the cups, about all the teams you've been watching so far, all the VODs are available from every single cup we played, one to four, and obviously the group stages, head over to battlefield ems one.com and make sure you check it out for yourselves you can see all the rankings there you can see all the social media down below us as well just get involved we like hearing from you guys and if you like the sound of tomorrow's games maybe you may have or stumble like against all authority make sure you follow this page on twitch tv so you can see exactly when we go live which will be at 7 ct but guys hopefully see you tomorrow